Hi guys, welcome to the Honest Perfume Reviewer. Uh, my name is Kiki, uh, I'm filming from Sweden. For those of you who don't know me already, uh, I had this big perfume meetup Saturday and I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about it. Um, today I had a, I typically have it on Sundays and then I usually have to kick people out at like dinner time because I gotta start making dinner for the kids. And this time I just decided to have it on a Saturday so I didn't, you know, we wouldn't have to end it. Uh, I'll just let people stay as long as they want. And around dinner time, we went and got some takeaway. Uh, and I think there were like six of us left. I think that there were like 12 maybe during the day. And then six stayed on um, for dinner and left around 10. So between two and 10, we can really go at it for a long time. And I thought I'd tell you a little bit about like uh, some new fragrances that I got, um, got my nose on. And I did, I'm actually on a no buy. But I make an exception for these meetups. I didn't buy anything expensive, but like it gets so boring like to have these these meetups and I can't buy anything. I just basically got a, a couple decants. I did some swaps. I got this really cheap bottle of perfume I'm going to tell you about. It's actually my first dupe ever. I don't really believe in dupes. I do believe in, in like supporting the perfumers and copying is really not my thing. But um, oh, why, why don't we start there? Um, I really do love Creed Aventus uh, for men, um, but not enough to buy a bottle at full retail price. And I, I like it mostly on men and not on myself. Or I'll just, I just like to like get it out and like sniff it for a bit, but not like wear it myself. Uh, but someone was selling this dupe. This one's called Pineapple Vintage. Uh, it comes in the same kind of bottle as Hiram Green's perfumes. I think they're so cute. Um, but, but it has this little funny label or cute label, uh, Emperor Extra, it's called. Um, and it, I mean, I, it, it was, there's only this much left and this was just perfect. Now I don't have to worry about that urge of like wanting because it is really similar. And the guy who sold this to me said, actually the performance is better. So, you know, why not? I'll make an exception to my rule. Um, anyway, that was one thing I got. Um, then I got the chance to try a quite new Francesca Bianchi fragrance. It's called Unspoken Musk. Uh, I ran out now. There was just a little bit left, but I just I just feel that um, her fragrances are just a little too much for me. They're a little a little bit too animalic and kind of like body like. And this one is no exception. It's kind of pretty, but it, it you know it has like a like a headiness. It's it's a floral musk, I think. I mean, I like it. I just don't love it. So, I mean, I don't think that any of her fragrances have been... I've, I've been through a, a, like a whole sample set of different fragrances from her and even more than that. But then I kind of like them a little bit, but then I, I don't love them. So I've never gone full bottle. Um, but I understand that people can really like her stuff because she has her own kind of style and her, her fragrances have a certain character. I think like the, the winner for the day was actually, um, and I talked about it, I think in my previous video and I got, got a decant of it now. It's Royal Tobacco from Amouage, um, from this Opus collection. It's called Opus, uh, what is it? Fort 14, I think X one and a, and a V these Roman figures. Uh, anyway, Royal Tobacco, uh, it was created by Cecile Sorokian. And this one really has something new to offer. It has a really distinctive licorice note. It has some, uh, animalic touches. It has some smokiness. It's got that birch tar. It's got uh, olibanum, like that typical amouage, interesting kind of base. This one has so many layers. It's going to be so fun to um, to get to you know work my way through this decant. Uh, it's it's special. This one is it's, it it brings something new. So I think this is going to be really fun. Uh, and then I have a new. This is a new fragrance for me too. I don't. I don't really love Serge Luton's as a house, but this fragrance, um, I don't love, or I sometimes have a hard time anyway with marine scents, but this is a, uh, um, a, can be described as a, as a church in the sea. And it's called uh, Dans le Bleu qui petit, or petit. I don't know how, I've taken French, but it's been so, so long time, so I'm not quite sure um, if I butchered that name. Um, but this, these, those, I mean, incense and marine notes might be difficult to combine, but these, this is beautiful. I really, really prefer this to like squid from, from a zoologist. This is so much prettier, uh, so much more natural smelling to me. There's something in that fragrance that makes, that smells artificial to me, uh, squid. This one I think is like, it's just so, it's so pretty. It's so... 
I really think it's beautiful at first sniff. I'll be getting back to you about this one, like how I, you know, what my opinion's gonna be like once I give it a full wearing. I haven't, give, give, I haven't given it a full wearing yet. I think that it might be even better in the summer, but I think I could year it, wear it year round. It has kind of a, a grayish color tint to the juice. Like it a lot. And then there's one I have kind of a love-hate feeling towards, uh, and it's Tuberose Nu uh, from Tom Ford. Comes in a white bottle. I have, I don't think I've tried this before because I've been so off Tuberose for quite a while. So when it came out, I was just basically choking on Tuberose. And now I just kind of, uh, kind of by coincidence, ended up with the decant a little bit. And it, this one, I have such mixed feelings towards. Um, the first thing I thought when I sprayed it on was that it reminds me of, of some of the old, one, one old and kind of sick customer that I visit now with this extra job that I'm doing where I go home to people's houses. You know how people's houses have a typical smell? And this particular customer has, and it doesn't smell bad there. It's just kind of a little bit of a older lady uh, or it's an older couple. Um, it's a something about like the soap that they use maybe, or I'm not quite sure. That's what hit me first. Um, and then it has kind of like a freshness, I think from the pepper, it has some kind of, it's called Timut pepper. Um, and this pepper, this Timut pepper is supposed to have kind of a grapefruit like quality. So it's kind of fresh in the beginning. There's both Lily and, and, um, the lily and jasmine, I think, in the opening, and then there's two bros, of course, of course, is the most dominant note. And then it has kind of a um, a base of like tonka bean, some woods. I think there's oud in here, and oud and two bros is maybe not the most co common combination. And I can't pick out the oud. I wouldn't have been able to say, but it definitely has a leathery accord, and it has suede listed, kind of the same vibe as like Irish Prima, but it's combined with other florals. But this is difficult. This is pretty heady. Um, it's very like not very smooth. It comes on really sharp. Um, like there's something disturbing ab about it. And it's, someone said this, I, I heard this from another YouTuber that it smells really different. Like when you put your nose to your arm or if you smell it, like the puffs you're getting, these little whiffs you're getting of the perfume when you're wearing it. And someone said that like her husband smelled it from across the room and it smelled like a, like a bubble gum shop or something. Um, and I've heard YouTubers say it smells really mature and I've had others say that it's a useful fragrance. So, you know, this one, you just have to get your nose on it and, you know, form your own opinion. Um, it has quite a low rating on Fragrantica, it, um, 366. And I think it has to do with like, it's that the white floral headiness might be difficult. The light, light smokiness from the suede might be difficult for some people but it's pretty like dusty. It's not sweet. It's like dry. Uh, and there's cacao. And maybe that is giving that like dusty powdery feeling. I don't know. I, I really, I don't know about this fragrance, but I do like it better from a distance. Like I've been wearing it all day in the morning now and I've kind of, enjoy, I've, I'm getting little whiffs of it, which I like. I don't love. So I'm still kind of on the fence and I don't know where it will be going, which I, I like this. When a fragrance starts out like this, sometimes it ends up like a true love. Um, especially since I'm now back on two broses. So, okay, what else did I get to try? I mean, I tried a bunch of stuff um, that I, what did, what did I try that I didn't, I don't have with me home, but um, I tried uh, Ooh La La from Tio Cabanel and I was nice, I, I was happy to say that I didn't like it because I, it's kind of nice just to be able to check something off. Okay, I've tried that, I didn't like it. I think it was too much saffron in it maybe. Um, it reminds some people of uh, Rosendo Mateo number five, which I don't like that much. Um, I think saffron is a little bit of a difficult note for me. I do like it, uh, absolutely, but not in all fragrances. Um, okay, so I got also my nose on Good Girl Gone Bad from By Killian. And I'll have to say, I think this fragrance is like, it's boring. It smells a little bit like the scratch and sniff books that like my mom used to read to me when I was a child. It's just kind of like, it's floral. It's a little bit powdery. It's uh, maybe, what, I mean, what is there in the base here? Cedar wood and amber. Okay. So it's an osmanthus dominant fragrance to my nose, but it also has tuberos and, and rose and orange flower. It's just kind of a, it's kind of a sweet floral that to me doesn't give me anything. So I'm just going to pass that on. Then, okay. The best house that I, that I discovered that I had never tried anything from um, I, I got to try like, I have three fragrances from them. 
uh, as samples uh, that I got from someone. And then I, um, I also got to try uh, a fourth of these. I think that those were the only ones, but I really like these fragrances. Uh, one is called Perfect Oud. This one I wouldn't buy because I think it's a little bit too aromatic and maybe masculine leaning. The Juniper Berry, it's very wearable, easy to wear fragrance, but that Juniper Berry I think is what is uh, putting me a little off. I don't, I don't think it's interesting enough to like buy a bottle of it, but it's not bad at all. Um, then there's one, this is my favorite, is Amber Magique. Um, and it's kind of a kind of a rose dominant ambery fragrance. Um, I just sprayed it on here. The funny thing is, it reminds me like of a really good designer, not a particular one, but something kind of like black opium or something like. It's not like super unique, but this one has something added. I think it might be the ambergris. There's a little bit of saltiness or something that makes it interesting, and it makes me feel like so well perfumed, like I'm just so happy with the way I'm smelling and I feel all kind of wrapped up in it, kind of like when I wear, um, I don't own, but I remember it from the sample I went through, uh, the Zerja Fragrance 400 from the uh, Join the Club collection. It's in a blue bottle. That one also makes me feel like so all put together, sophisticated. This Amber Magique, so beautiful. This is, uh, okay, this, this house, I didn't say the name of the house. It's Maison Sur. Maison Sur. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but it's M-I-Z. And then and then Sur with an S at the end. Uh, and it's Alberto Morillas, uh own brand. And he's like a master perfumer who has like 450 plus fragrances in the database on Fragrantica. And he has made things for uh, designer houses. He's made things for niche houses. He's the guy behind CK1. Um, he's the guy behind a few different Killian fragrances. He's made Gucci fragrances. Um, what else was there? I, I can't remember all the fragrances he's made, but this, the, and he's been also given two like major awards. One was like the Master Perfumer Lifetime Award or something like that. And another one was, ah, I can't remember. This was all on Fragrantica. Um, so, so, and, and he's, there's a bunch of fragrances in this collection. They're like, $220, $230 for 100 mil. Pretty good price for this quality. And then I tried Poudre d'Or, which is kind of a, this has like iris. It has, I don't know, all the fragrance, all the, I think maybe some auris in here. Um, ah, this is it's really sweet and beautiful. It, I think it has tiare flower too. So it's, it has a little bit of a tropical powdery uh, vibe. It's beautiful. And then there's another iris. Um, I tried another iris fragrance. Someone brought it to the meetup. It's called uh, Bois Iridescent, I think it was called. Uh, that was really, really beautiful. Um, I mean, I do have a lot of iris fragrances, but I also, um, they're easy to wear. Uh, I want to try that again. Maybe I'll get a decant from this guy who owns it. He certainly has enough. He has 100 mil and he got three different ones from that house. I really, I'm really enjoying these samples a lot. Um, and then I have here uh, Shangri-La from Here I'm Green. And Here I'm Green, if you didn't know about it, it's a, it's a house uh, that uses all natural ingredients, uh, which I do think is is a, is a good thing. Um, unfortunately, the the many people are asking me about, you know, what 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 could you recommend that is like organic or natural or good for the skin or whatever. And I really don't know what to say because. Usually they're like not used to niche and um, pointing them to here I'm green is kind of a kind of bold thing to do because those fragrances take some, I think it takes an acquired taste to appreciate here I'm green. Um, I mean, I have myself Arbolé uh, from that house and I love it, but I really didn't like it at first because I thought it smelled like cough syrup um, or like a, almost like licorice-y. Uh, it's a patchouli scent. It's beautiful, patchouli tonka vanilla. Um, super, super, I love it so much. And now I want to get Moon Bloom. It, uh, it has, it's a beautiful, uh, tropical, um, tuberose with a little bit of coconut. I love it. It's really, really pretty. This Shangri-La, I just, I haven't really gotten to know this fragrance yet. Um, but I can tell you about like their perfume called Hyde is like a super tarish kind of fragrance. Um, and it's all natural, but it's really, really, I would never wear something like that. And the honey fragrance from them, the, the called Slow Dive, it's like so strong on the honey that it almost flips over and smells like urine. 
So I think that these, you really have to kind of, um, you know, use them and, and get used to them. And then you might fall in love with them. Kind, they're kind of that in that category. So it's going to be nice to get to know this Shangri-La fragrance. Um, hmm. It has a little bit of a skanky, uriny quality. I'm not quite sure what this is, but jasmine fragrance maybe. Um, I'll get back to you on that one. I, I just wanted to kind of say that it's so much fun to meet other people that are as nerdy as I am. And um, uh, we started talking about what was the best fragrance, you know, that that, that we smelled uh, at this play or uh, during the day. And everyone had found something new to love and met some new people and discussed. And I just think it's, it, I think it's so much fun, like just bringing people together from all kind of place, all different categories of life. I mean, we're all different ages. We're both genders. We're, um, and we all kind of meet, uh, together, uh, around this common interest and age doesn't matter. And, uh, it's just, we just have a lot of fun. So, um, uh, I'll, I'll I'm going to be getting back to you about these fragrances. Um, some of them, and I'm, I'm sure that I'll be buying a Maison, Maison Sur fragrance, uh, before too long, probably. Um, yeah, so I'll get, keep you updated about these fragrances later on. You can consider this more of a first impression kind of video. All right. Bye-bye.